What's good? This is Noah from High Snob, and this is the review. All right, first, we caught up with A Boogie in his hometown and his squad to talk about how he's impacted the Bronx. We also have Ball Boys, and they met up with Nate Robinson to talk about his brand new endeavors. We also caught up with Greg Yuna, famous jeweler, and he pretty much told us how he manages to uh, stay apart from what the other jewelers are doing. Peace. <laughs> Chilling. Your whole family with you right now? Yeah, that's a fact. We in Nelson Park, High Bridge. You already know what it is. Yeah, man. So how often do you come out here, man? Every once so often, you know, we come show love and shit. Yeah. yeah we, most of the time, we on the road doing work. So for me, when we get free time, we could just pull up. Yeah. What does uh, High Bridge mean to you? Um, High Bridge means everything. Like, you know, like we named our label after our neighborhood. You yeah. feel me? So. It's just everything, you know? We done been through thick and thin over here. Like, lost friends, gained friends, you know? Shit, shit happened, you know? What's good, this is Noah from High Snob, and as you can see, we are in Highbridge right now. You wanna introduce yourself, everybody? Yeah, yeah, what's going on? I'm Bubba, Highbridge the label. You already know what's going on. We in Highbridge, it's Liddy. Huh? What's up, yo? It's A Boogie with the hoodie head, Highbridge the label. We in Nelson Park right now with it. Everything Liddy, huh? Don't, bitch. You know what it is. Chubby. We in a building. This is stomping grounds right here. So, uh, is this where you guys used to hang out all the time? Yeah, yeah. when you come outside, it's the first place you come. Yeah? You don't go nowhere else, you gotta see what's going on here, and then you see what's going on everywhere else. I used to live right here, so that was, this is my first. To come outside and go in the park. Right. Like, I, I live my, right across the street. I remember my mom's deuce just yelling at me out the window right there. Wait, my, my window <laughs> right here. <laughs> His window right here, my, my window was my, right there. My window. Boogie window was right there. All right, so uh, how important is it to come back here? And how often do you guys come back here? We come back here, I'm not gonna say we come back here every day because we wouldn't be making no money if we come back here every yeah. day. When we not working, we come back, show love. We always here, like, it's always Facts. love. Everybody family, for me. Yeah. So, there's no hate, there's none of that. It's, it was no all love from the beginning. Yeah, and how do you think your success has uh, impacted Highbridge? It got an impact, period. Like, not just Highbridge, it got an impact, period. People out the country looking up to us. Yeah, yeah. Some motivation, so they see what's going on. For me. And you feel me, they follow up. Like, they know you can make it from being from Highbridge, so they could try to go make it too, for me? So we show everybody that it's possible to make it out of the Highbridge. Yeah, and who'd you guys look up to when you guys were young? We looked up to, we looked, we looked up to people like, like 50 Cent. Like, people that did power moves though, like Jay-Z, artists that, that over, overpowered they, Powers, <laughs> yeah. Especially people that come from New York, bro. Yeah. We could do the same shit they did. And y'all always been on the fashion? Always been on the fashion since it was Tabernetti, PRP, Shoe Religion. We from the Bronx, bro. We like, we hybrids. Yeah. We, like, yeah. we, like, we, like, we like our own borough. Yeah. Like, for That's, me, we not even, That's how like, we call it. We, we call not even like part of We call hybrids our own borough, for real. We've though. always been fleet. Yeah. yeah, we was fly bridge because it's like everybody wanted to get fly and Facts. shit. <laughs> what y'all do in high school to like make sure y'all stay fly? Your parents hook y'all up or nah? It wasn't really about like the parents hooking you up because we wasn't, our parents didn't get, they wasn't rich for me. So yeah. we had to take what they gave us and without, and yeah, hustle for me, we had to hustle and, and get whatever we could get. Where some people, some people was fortunate more than others. Some people wasn't so. It's only right right now we come back and just get back and all that, man, for real. Yeah, being from the Bronx and being like pretty much like where hip hop was started, you think that just gave you like an extra flavor? Yeah, it gave me an extra flavor because like, I feel like we, we from where it, where it originated, so now we got the new source also. Yeah. So we got the old, that old sound still with the new auto tune, whatever you want to call the sound. So we taking over this shit like, and we got, we got words. Like people got words in their in they songs, but they don't say words that you mean anything. Like, shit, like I said, mumble rap. I'm not saying it's a it's a problem with mumble rappers because they get it how you, you get it how you get it. Exactly. Like, I fuck with a whole bunch of mumble rappers, but like I'm the opposite. Word, we the opposite. So what's the process for you both in the studio? Like you make music fast or? We used to write. We started off writing. I remember our first song we made was it was on a corner in front of his building. We used to write. We, what, we got a head. Was that bad? Game winners. Game, game winners. He was in our little headphones, writing back and forth. Just on the corner. 
not talking to nobody, just on our phone. This is before right? we was in the, even in the booth together. Like I, I had the beat on YouTube on my phone and shit. We went to his crib, played the beat. We just finished writing and shit. And we went to the studio and recorded it. That was really the process. Like the process was really writing at home. Yeah. Facts. And go to the studio and record it. But yeah. now we got. That was like go to the studio and just catch a vibe. Yeah. Man, I don't even write no more. I ain't write in the past. Six months, I ain't write a song. That's what I'm saying. Every day we just go up the top. I, I make two songs at right. the top. The only way I write, if I'm in a car listening to a beat or I'm home listening to a beat, right. and I think of some lines I want to write. But if I'm in the studio, I'm just going to tell a nigga, yo, put it up. I think I got some shit I want to say right now. Yeah. yeah. And what y'all got coming up right now? Right now? He got a project, I got a project. And right now, I'm working on my international project. After Where? the international project, I got another project coming up. I'm looking at the second one the most though because the international one is just for me to gain new followers and new fans all around the world from Africa and you know, like wherever. So what kind of what kind of sound is it? Yeah, see for me, um, it's experiment really. But then after that, I'm going like all me. I gotcha. just give them give them what I got. Say bangers, not even just bangers though, because I'm not even that type of artist. I, I like I like music, so I'm gonna give them music. I'm gonna give them an album. I'm gonna give them a real album. So you working with like artists from like other countries and different languages and things like that? Yeah, yeah. Um, right now I'm waiting on Stormzy. Right now we got oh, the um, that's the last man. one we we working on. Dope. That's gonna be crazy. Stormzy's dope, man. Big up hell Stormzy. Yeah. Hell yeah. Man, well thank you guys. Thank you guys for coming out, man. I appreciate no it. problem. Thanks. Thanks, man. What's up, everybody? It's Kyle Hodge. Ian Cervantes. Uh, we are Ball Boys, and we are here with the one and only Nate Robinson. What's thank up? you for coming oh, up. man, thank you guys for having me, bro. Word. Uh, to start off, you're a big sneaker guy. Tell us what you're rocking today. Oh, man, you know Classic Fours, man. These these bad boys right here, these universal. You Classic Fours, man, one of my favorite Jordans, man. You can dress them up, dress them down. You can wear them with anything. You're also wearing American Flag Football League tee. Man, y'all know what Tell it is. Yes, that. I'm playing yeah. football. 132 teams. We're narrowing it down now to just about you know 12 teams. There's Mike Vick is in, in is captain on one. Chad Ochocinco, uh, Michael Johnson, and myself. You know, we get to play against you know some of the average Joes that are you know gunning for us. So we you know we got to be ready and got to be down. What, uh, what made you want to get back into football? You know, you had the, the tryout with the Seahawks a, a few years back. Why did you want to get back to it? Uh, well, it was my first love, man. It's like, you know, reuniting with your first love all over again, you know. So you pick up where you left off. For me, show, showcase my talent playing football, you know, and knowing I could still go hoop. It just shows that, uh, you know, if you put your mind to it, you could do anything. I saw on Instagram that uh, you gave Ocho Cinco the business on the court. Chad's a great sport, man. He, you know, he challenges everybody to everything. Uh, you know, that's what I love about him, you know what I'm saying? And then getting to compete against a guy that talks more trash than Kevin Garnett. Chad Ochocinco, shout outs to you, man, you big trash talker. You're you're playing with Carlos Boozer. What's like, yes. what's your relationship like with him? He's like a big brother I never had, man, honestly. You know, I'm the oldest of nine kids, so uh, Booze, like when, when you got a friend that you can call that's always there for you like that, man, it's like, you know, you can't, you, you can't take that for granted, so. Shout out to Carlos Boozer, man. He's a great guy, great father, great person. You and Boozer uh, also have a podcast together. Right, Hold Team that. Hold That Podcast. Hold That Podcast. What does that, what does that mean? So basically, Hold That is a one-up. So it's like a pair of kicks that you will always want that somebody, like, nobody can get. Okay. So it's kind of like, uh, I just got the new Kyrie Irving, the Wheaties box. So okay, yeah. a lot of people trying to get those, you tell yeah. them, yeah, I got them, hold that. Uh, so yeah, big threes coming up. Uh, tell us about that, are you excited? Yeah, man, excited, get to play some basketball, hopefully. Uh, I'm gonna try to make a run for the NBA this next this year coming up. Oh, nice. Uh, I'm excited, man. This is another opportunity to showcase my talent for people that haven't seen me play. Uh, and then to show people that I still can play at the highest level. I got Jermaine O'Neal, Mari Stoudemire on my team right now. So we got a pretty solid squad if we can win it. Cool, cool. Uh, do you have any sneakers you you want to ball in? Uh, yeah, so I got some, I got some, I got some, uh, man, I, I wish they would make some Nike or Jordan collab with some Hold That Jordans, that'd be fire. I got some socks. Yeah, some Hold, hold that, that Socks, some, yeah, right? So yeah. look, guys, Team Hold That Socks there we go. coming. You know, we got all kinds of flavors. I think it's a, it's a great time for that. I mean, there's a, a, a great emergence between NBA and like streetwear and sneaker culture now. 
Um, I mean, I you're definitely one of the people who paved that way of like rocking Yeezys on the court. Yeah, man. And, like, I, it's, OG Jordans. Like sometimes it's fun. It's fun seeing my guy PJ Tucker win the sneaker. Yeah, yeah. And I was kind of bummed that. that like when I was in the league, they wasn't letting me do that. Like it was a rule you couldn't, you know, what I'm saying like you couldn't wear the dress yeah. code was the more certain, strict, yeah, right? strict white or black. It was simple. You know, is there any sneaker that you wanted to wear but you weren't allowed at that time? Just any Jordan, because I was Nike. They were like, yo, we got to wear Nikes. But I was trying to wear any color Jordan I could yeah. find, and it was like, nah. Yeah, it seems like now they're even a little less strict with that, too. If you're a Nike guy, you can still wear Jordans, at least. Who are, like, some of the players now that you, like, respect their sneaker game or, like, their style game? Yeah, I've, Westbrook's number one fashion. You know, he's in his own world. He's comfortable in his own skin, in his own clothes. I like that. I love the fact that, like, Carl Anthony Towns, they've been doing their whole what is it, Dragon Ball Z? Yeah, the those shoes. I'm a big Dragon great. Ball Z fan. And I'm like, damn, like they're coming up with so many cool ideas. But PJ takes it bar none. Yeah, yeah you can't, you just can't and argue with it. Even the shoes that he brings to the game that he he don't even wear, he switches at halftime. You know, over the years, it seems like a lot of NBA players are taking their outfits uh, a lot more seriously. I love it. I love it because now you got your freedom to add your swag and your style the way you want. Like, like who are you? You know, when you walk into the game, you can tell everybody's personality by the way they dress. Deion Sanders said it best. You look good, you feel good, you play good, so. Yeah. And it's great that NBA's finally given players that freedom. Facts, well, I'm a fan, so thank you NBA for uh, waiting until I was out the league <laughs> to let these guys look fresh. Yeah, well you, broke, you helped break down that door, man, so we gotta thank you for that. Thank you, man. Bron or MJ? Come on, man. I'm wearing these shoes for a reason. Okay. LeBron's he's a goat. He's he's up there one A one B with Jordan. But it's like who's it's like your preference. Thanks so much for joining us today. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, you said you're trying to get back in the league. So back we, in the league. We hope you got flag football, football the guys. You guys can find me on social media. Flag football. It's gonna be fun. So Do best you, thing, man. man. Yeah. yeah thank sure. Thanks coming. so much, man. Appreciate, Appreciate you. It. Yep. Appreciate it. Hold that. Hold that. What's good? This is Noah from High Snob, and today I am here with Greg Yuna, aka Mr. Flawless hey. of Chapter Two. How oh, are God. you, man? Chilling, regular, man. Everything is regular. So first off, one thing that I personally want to know: How do you even get into being a jeweler? Like, if I wanted to become a jeweler, how do I make that happen? I mean, it's a tough, it's a tough business. You need money for, for I didn't, I didn't come in here with. Um, I started off in sales. I was working for my um, uncle and cousin at the time. Yeah, so for most people, it seems like they have a family member that do it, and that's how they get in. Yeah. Yeah, so I was, I was kind of grandfathered in. Got you. Got and, you. And um, I turned uh, their business into a gold mine, and then realized I wasn't being treated right, so I kind of dipped off. Oh, really? Mind. Yeah, I went my own way. You just wanted to make your own thing? I just you? feel like... I wasn't appreciated, you know, so it was like I'm, I'm doing all this work and making all this noise and, and, and bringing all this attention to this one place and not being rewarded. Yeah. And how were you, how were you making that noise? Was it just the things that you were creating or the Absolutely. connections you were making? Absolutely. Just creating. I'm just, uh, overall, I just like to create, you know. Yeah. I feel like I'm very creative, so. We've got some pieces in front of us. I really want to get into this, uh, this matte, this matte gold. Would you say that you started this? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. So m most of my career, I've been kind of copied. Yeah. You know, I put all this work into making pieces, and it's like you go see it watered down on someone's Instagram across the world or whatever. And it always bothered me until I was just like, you know what? I understand. In the beginning, I was, I was, I used to get angry and upset, and and I get it. You know, when you're hot, people copy. Do you, you inspire? Do you know that people know it came from you? Yes and no. Mm -hmm. Some, a lot of people don't have the, the, they don't know. They see it somewhere and they copy it. They don't even care to see where it came from. Gotcha. They, don't, they don't care, you know, what it's about or what inspired me to make it. So it's like, it's a money thing. It's like, oh, this is how we're gonna make it. Boom, it's done. And uh, is the jewelry, I mean, the jewelry industry is not too big, right? It's huge. Really? Yeah. yeah. It's everyone's a jeweler now. It's you know Instagram. Instagram gave everyone uh, basically a platform. Gotcha. So if if you weren't, let's say a stylist, you can be a stylist now. If you weren't a, 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 a professional model, you're a professional model. Now. Right. So you can kind of give yourself um, a title. 
So it's like everyone's a jeweler now, everyone's a stylist now, everyone's you know a rapper now, everyone, yeah. you know what I mean? So, but how do people get access to diamonds? It's 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 it's, it's doable. It's like you, you you meet you meet somebody here. He's a diamond dealer. It's this block is it's like a million jewelers on this block. Huh. It's one block and it's probably the most expensive block in the world. Really? Yeah. 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 There's billions and billions of dollars here. So, for example, if someone said, "Yo, I want my AP," bust know, it down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I take it and I fuck it up. Do you have to get the diamonds for that Absolutely. specifically? Okay. Absolutely. So every piece you have to get diamonds just for that. Absolutely. Got you. All the sizes are different, you know. Got you, got you. This is the most insane thing. Yeah, that's doing. the Jesus piece. <sighs> oh my god. And so how how long does it take to make this? About three weeks. Okay. And you've also got the smallest Jesus piece in the world. In the world. Working on Guinness Book of World Records right now. Really? Me and Ben Ball have been going at it. Oh really? Yeah, that's the that's the homie. Oh wait, yeah, yeah. Fred, he did one like John Mayer. Or yeah, something. yeah, yeah. This yeah. is I think this is even smaller. This is smaller. He tried to say the one that he did with John Mayer was smaller than this, but you know we we go in. That's my bro though. But yeah, this is the smallest one in the world. There's nothing smaller than this. And so it's, how it's tiny? How is that made? Is that is that is that is that you really in the lab? Like I got a team. Okay. You know what I mean? We 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 put it together. And this cross is about a hundred grand. Wow. With the culture really exploding, especially you, I mean, you know, you see your office, you got the cars, the Banksy, and the, you know, the Supreme everywhere. Do you see these kids kind of bringing the culture into the jewelry game? I'm from the culture, but yeah. I, I feel like a lot of the kids don't know where this stuff, again, started. Yeah. Instagram, again. People are buying cars. Everyone's buying cars now. It's yeah. making it. It's it's making it's it's being everything is being watered down. Yeah. I remember having Supreme, and it's like now having Supreme is kind of like not that. It's, it's not it's not exclusive anymore. Yeah. You know, like those dolls, you couldn't even a couple of years ago it was like you couldn't get them at all, and now everybody has them. It's kind of like man, I don't know. So I feel like everything's being watered down. So when this becomes everywhere, because it will happen. Right. And that's why you gotta make sure that you know this man started it right here. What do you? Uh, where's your mind going next? Or you can't tell me yet, right? No, I got a lot of I got a lot of things in the law that I'm working on. Yeah. Yeah. In this field, you gotta keep it super tight. You know, you slip up and then they're on it. And there's so many, so many people are looking for the new, the new thing. Mm -hmm. It's the fastest way to make money. Yeah. What do you think uh, looks the best with jewelry? What kind of what kind of pieces? What kind of what kind of things do you rock? As far as clothes yeah, or yeah, clothes. I think to, for me, I would keep it plain, as, as, as simple as possible. Yeah. Because I'm too loud here. Yeah. So I try to keep it when it's just too loud everywhere. It's too much. I don't like the yeah. all that extra shit. So I don't know, plain tee, preferably black, when I'm going out. And then just let the just jewelry. Just let the jewelry speak. Anything you want to leave the uh, leave your fans with? I don't know. Stay tuned. I got some cool things in the works. Yeah. Got some sneakers coming out. Uh oh. Got some things. You can't talk about I that too much either. Uh, okay. Well, thank you, man. I appreciate it. All right, bro. Your time, man.